Provide the potential here. We've got Mark Kilburn. Mark uh, graduated from here. You will all have seen him join. Uh, I coached Mark in track in high school, and uh, he was always a hard worker, but we also always had a lot of fun. Just like we always talk about, work hard, be prepared, but then let's make sure we're enjoying the moment and having fun. Um, I've also followed him as I would any of you guys, and a couple other guys that graduated from here that have done the crazy sport of uh, the ultimate fighting is what I call it. Mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever had the same fight. It's pretty good. Pretty good. And uh, after a couple of his fights, they were pretty brutal. He ended up winning. And I said, you know, this one's a good one, man. No, you should stop now. You got you know, wife and kids look after. It's time for you to stop beating people up and getting to do that. And uh, I think you finally has, haven't you? I'm retired. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Uh, are you still training on the guys? Yeah, I, I still okay. train full time. And, so, yeah. But uh, so you guys have seen him working out. He's he's just an animal. He's running around town. You know, always always doing something physical. And so he's got some uh, good advice for you, I think, today. And let's uh, let's give him a hand. Mark. Said I went most of you in school. Logan's father, Jack, a good friend of mine. Coach stole some of my speech. <laughs> he was my coach, basketball and track. I have a lot, a lot of good memories from that. I'm sure you guys have stories that you can tell. Um, I definitely appreciate the relationship that I have and the support that he's given me over the years. Um, I worked with Jerry's mom. Jerry was, like I said, he's my nephew. And I worked with his mom, and we were, we were sitting around yesterday, and I was telling her that I had a basketball, and basically the mission condition that was signed uh, by the, the coaches and the players with the state in 1981. And she said, wow, that's cool. You should really take it up, and you should show the guys as a kind of extra motivation for the game on Saturday. So I called Coach, and, and he, sure enough, he said, yeah, it sounds great. Bring it up. So I brought it up. I've had this an awful long time, just sitting on my shelf. What I want to do is, I want you guys to take a look at it, hold it, see what it represents. While you're looking at it, I'm going to give my take on what that, what that ball represents. So what does it represent? It represents hard work. You guys come to classes all week long, practice is hard. Learning new things is hard. Drilling is hard. Push-ups and sit-ups and spring, that's all hard work. The guys that signed that basketball knew what hard work was, and so do you. It represents dedication. Sacrifice the passion for something that you guys love. Dedication. Again, you have to come to practice. Sometimes you're tired, sometimes you're sore. Sometimes you got other things on your mind, you don't want to come to practice and you come anyway. That's dedication. I'm sure some of you sometimes would rather be doing something else. Maybe hunting and fishing sounds a lot better sometimes than coming to practice, but you come anyway. Uh, passion for something that you love. A lot of you guys have been playing basketball since you were little kids. You're passionate about it, it shows. You don't get to this level unless you're passionate. Like Coach said, I like to run around town. Since Jerry was a little kid, I can remember seeing him all hours of the day out there shooting baskets. Sometimes I'd go down and go for a run at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. He'd be out there with the life on shooting baskets. That's passion. That gets you where you are. It represents school spirit, teamwork, and belonging to something bigger than yourself. The school spirit's a big thing, guys. One of the nice things about the whole new Eastern Valley thing is I'm really seeing school spirit that I haven't seen in a long time. Everybody's wearing the colors. They all have the shirts. Coach, you remember back in the 80s when we went and, and Cheryl and Dave parents had the big red and black wigs. Man, we had school spirit back here, and that's coming back. And you guys are a big part of that. You're something greater than yourself. Not just yourself, not just your team, but the community. Whenever, when, when this happens, when a small, small town like this goes to state, the whole community comes in. There'll be people at your game that haven't been to a game in years. There'll be people at the coffee shop talking about it that haven't been talking basketball in years. So that's a big deal. It represents mental toughness and dealing with pressure. You guys are mentally tough. You don't get to this point without being mentally tough. And we all have pressure, right? Maybe you fought with a girlfriend a big, big game. Maybe you're not doing so well in school, or you're upset with your parents, or maybe you lost a loved one. Those pressures are there, and everybody dealing with them. Everybody that signed that basketball sometime during the season played with a heavy heart. Uh, pressure, how do you deal with it? You know, I have a great example in the fight world. The Samurai Warriors, they used to put themselves in a state of mind called Mushin. Mushin, literal term for that is mind no mind. 
the ability to shut off your emotions, to play with no emotion. You don't have good or bad thoughts. You just play. Okay? You've been in that position yourself. You know your head, 40 in the head, 40 points in the game, you're doing good, you're, you're doing the fancy passes, you're dribbling between the legs. You don't have care in the world. You're in the moment and you're not thinking about anything but the game. That's what Bushy is. It represents a legacy left by those who played and coached. Somewhere on that basketball, you'll see the name Steve Fierbach. Steve Fierbach is arguably one of the best athletes to come out of the Western school system. I remember Steve Fierbach. I remember his demeanor, I remember his character, and I remember how he played the game of basketball. I was nine years old in 1981, right in those stands. There's another name on there, Stuart Moore. Stuart Moore used to drain three pointers all the time. And I remember when he'd, he'd drain one, he'd crawl and say, Stoo! It's the little stuff like that that people remember. How do you want to be remembered? How do you personally want to be remembered? What legacy do you want to leave? And how do you want your team to be remembered? How do you want the first ever Eastern Valley freshman basketball team to made it to state in 2014 to be remembered? You're a role model. Whether you accept that or not, you're a role model. Somewhere in those stands, a nine-year-old kid watching that. As the lights get brighter and the crowd gets louder, they're watching you get closer. I could go on and on about what the ball represents, but at the end of the day, it represents something different for everybody. 33 years ago, that ball got put in my hands. And today I'm putting it in your hands. And pretty soon, how awesome would it be for you to be the next team that signs a basketball that says Eastern Valley Riverhawks State Champs? You think about that. Don't dream about it. And don't even think about it. Believe it. Because what you think about, what you dream about, is not nearly as important as what you really believe. Is that what you want? You have a goal, you want to be state champs, and that goal is within your reach. You're 21 2 overall and undefeated in the conference. Is that right? 21 2 overall? That's pretty impressive, guys. <clears throat> but you're not done yet. There's a motivational speaker out there. His name's Eric Thomas. Probably some of you have heard of him and also some stuff on YouTube. Um, really good, really well known in the sports world. He has a quote that's pretty famous now that I really like. And that quote is, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. So I want you to think about that in the fourth quarter when you're tired and the game is close. When you, want to, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, you'll be successful. And I want you to think about that ball, like I said. Let's be the next one to sign that ball. I want to leave this with you. Like Coach said, I train a man for all of them and the amateur fighters. And the ones that leave the greatest impression on me have cornered hundreds of guys' fighters. The ones that leave the greatest impression on me aren't the ones that have the best skills or with the best record. The ones that leave the greatest impression on me are the ones that give everything they have to give. Win or lose, that's important. Win or lose, give everything they have to give on that night. And when they walk out of that cage, they don't have any regrets. Okay? Tonight you're going to get another moment in time that you'll never get back. If you win tonight, you play another game, you'll get another moment in time that you'll never get back. So give all you got. You go out on that board. When you leave, make sure that you give it all that you have to give. <clears throat> one last quote. Vince Lombardi, one of the greatest NFL football coaches of all time, well known for a lot of good quotes, said, I firmly believe that a man's finest hour, the greatest fulfillment of anything he holds dear, is that moment when he's worked his heart out for a good cause and lays exhausted on the battlefield. So I want to wish you guys good luck tonight. I want you to go out there and I want you to give it all you have. Give all you have to give, leave it all on the court. Go to the wall. It'd be great if a bunch of these were floating around. But more importantly, I want you to be able to pull this out of the bag 30 years from now and tell a bunch of young men and women whatever it is. Thank you.